Hey guys, how's it going? Kevin Cleary here with a quick first impressions for you on a knife that I have been super excited about. This is a knife from Monterey Bay Knives and it's a design by Ray Laconico. This, of course, is the Monterey Bay Knives Old Guard. Now, this is the second iteration of this knife, and there have been some minor changes. The blade grind has changed. The thumb stud has changed. The construction has changed. It's a backspacer where before the original models, uh, this was all milled out of one piece, and now they've gone with a titanium backspacer. A couple other things that I may get into in the full review, but uh, we're not going to spend a lot of time on all of that stuff for now. But let me let me start off by saying this is a knife that I really, really found the looks of to be highly appealing. Um, the original as well, and I kind of was kicking myself over not getting in on the first run of Old Guards. But as I see the changes they made in going into the second run, I'm pretty stoked. Now, these are sold out, but as far as I can tell, there will be other options available. In fact, you can see this one is done in the rainbow or rain drop carbon fiber which looks pretty nice i wasn't sure how i'd feel about it in person i think it looks a little nicer than it does on video but um i believe there will be a full titanium version of this and i wouldn't be surprised if there was a micarta version as well so if you want one of these make sure you're following monterey bay knives on instagram and uh, and i think they even have an internet i mean a, an email sign up where, where you'll get a notification of new models that are that are coming available but when I saw that uh, these were going to be doing, they were going to be doing another run of these, I was pretty excited because I was, you know, sort of sad that I'd missed the first run. There's also a smaller version of this. I didn't check. I checked to see before making this if this one is sold out, and it is. I didn't check the small version. They may or may not still be available. It's hard to know what's going to be the most popular. Anyway, uh, I'm a big fan of Ray Laconico, and this knife shows exactly why that is. Okay, if you look at just the aesthetic of this, it's so clean, it's so simple, it's so smooth, it's it's classy. Like this is just Ray Laconico's current aesthetic to a T. And and I have enjoyed so many of his his designs. The the Keen that he did in collaboration with Masterhop was fantastic. The Gemini, of course, is very very popular. The Kaiser Intrepid was from Laconico, and it's a very again same same kind of thought process. Uh, previously from Monterey Bay Knives, there's been the Easy C, and then I recently I guess about a year ago I reviewed the XLC, which I also included on my best of 2020, I believe, unless it was in 2019. But there's been lots of great knives. There are a number of really nice knives from Monterey Bay Knives if you now they've tended to be a little smaller and that's a little outside of my uh, you know what I find what I appreciate uh, but this one at eight inches is right there where I want it to be and I have to say that both sides of this so the show side yeah you get that kind of a little bit showy um, raindrop carbon fiber on the titanium side as well, though, I, I find it looks very clean, very attractive. This is just, this is what I love about Ray Laconico's designs. Um, and I guess the other thing is there are, that if you like that, there are tons of his, op his models available out there. It can be, you know, perhaps from a business standpoint, you go, Ray, are you maybe flooding the market a little bit too much, making your models too available? And I suppose that argument could be made, but frankly, I'd be happy to own like every single one of them. It's not practical for the size of my collection, but uh, I like a ton of the stuff. In fact, I have another Laconico collaboration on the way to me in the mail right now, and you guys are going to have to wait and see which one that is. So let's finally, after me ranting and raving about why I find this knife, what I like about this knife, or what I like about this designer and about this company, Monterey Bay Knives, making his designs available, let's get into some of the details on this knife. So up front, oh, look how kinky it is. Hold on. See if I can make it look a little bit nicer for the camera. There we go. So up front, we have this very, very high satin finish drop point blade in M390. It is fairly good at the edge. If you look down there, you can see it's fairly thin edge, but this is pretty hefty blade stock. And, and I actually like that. Again, I've said this over and over again, but for an EDC knife, I want something a little more substantial. Yeah, there's my 
There's my uh, smiling face in the mirror, but really nicely done. I love the finish on this blade. Highly attractive M390 blade. Really, really pleased with that. Uh, it is thumb stud deployed. You know, we've got a titanium frame lock here. It's on washers. Uh, you can see the stop pin back there. So that's how they've done the stop pin. It's fairly stiff in terms of detent. And I will say this right away. The first thing I noticed as soon as I tried to flip this is if I get my fingers over here on the lock bar and apply some pressure, boy, that's stiff. Uh, simply moving my fingers back a little bit like to this position and it does deploy no problem. So it's a pretty stiff detent. I tend to appreciate that. I know some people will probably complain and, and you know, people talk about, you know, designing knives where you shouldn't, you shouldn't have to keep your fingers off the lock bar. I, I don't really, I mean, so let me share a quote from Alan Elishowitz when I was talking with him on the Knife Junkie podcast. He said that in his opinion, all detents should be separate and apart from the lock bar. They should be two independent features. And I do like that thought process. Well, I also understand it's sort of a standard way of doing things. Okay, so uh, the detent is a little stiff, but not, not impossible. Okay, there you go. And it is very satisfying because of that stiffer detent. Oh boy, boy that feels good. Uh, it's kind of drop shut. Once you put that pressure back on, you can shake it closed for sure, but it's not, um, it doesn't feel like a knife that's on bearings. It feels like a really well done knife that's on washers. Now I've taken a look in here. This is just the first impressions. I haven't had time to take this knife apart yet, but as I look in here, it looks to be, see, you can see a little bit of white there. So I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that we've got uh, Teflon and phosphor bronze washers layered like you often see on cold steels and a few other knives. Um, I, I will, before the full review, take it apart and be able to talk a little more about that. Uh, also, I may adjust the action a little bit and see what changes I can make. If I, you know, take this part, clean it up, put a little lubrication, and then we'll, then I'll reassess and I'll share that with you in the full review. Uh, we've already talked about the raindrop carbon fiber here. It does have a nested steel liner. If you take a look there, you can see that milled titanium clip. Uh, stainless steel lock bar insert. I think you can actually see, I'll try and catch the light enough to show you, but there is an over travel stop. It kind of extends out this way. Uh, you can't really, I can't seem to quite catch it. There you go. You can kind of see it there. Uh, lanyard hole back here, which is pretty plain Jane. Doesn't take a whole lot away from the design. Titanium backspacer along with that titanium frame lock. And we already pointed out that's a, that's a difference from the original uh, old guard that came out. Uh, so there you go. That's a quick rundown on the specs. Let me know how you feel about the raindrop carbon fiber. I really, I'm, I, I don't know. I was kind of on the fence about it. Now that I have the knife in person, I, I find it kind of attractive. Size and weight on this is the other thing we want to touch on before we wrap up here. So almost eight and one eighth inches, three and seven sixteenths on the blade. So just a hair under three and a half inches, four and five eighths. Okay. Is the closed dimension, which is not too bad. When the knife is opened, I tend to grip it with my finger or kind of in that choil. You can choke up a little bit if you want to do some detailed work, but this is where my hand generally lands. Okay, back here, there is quite a good bit of grip area at four and one eighth inches. And the weight on this is a very comfortable four ounces. So for a titanium frame lock, four ounces, I find that totally adequate. My first impression of this knife, and again, this could change, but... Um, I like this knife a whole lot. If you're a Ray Laconico fan, if you like clean, simple, elegant designs, I think this will appeal to you. Um, it is a little expensive, okay, for a for a titanium frame lock made overseas. Uh, a couple hundred bucks is is nothing to to sneeze at. But they are limited availability, and anytime you do smaller production numbers, that's going to increase cost. Okay, that's just kind of part of the deal. Um, I also would have liked some more options. So when this one came out, it was like the raindrop carbon fiber or nothing. You know, it would have been nice to see full tie, micarta, something else, all available at the same time. I suspect they'll end up coming out like in separate runs, or maybe the next run will be titanium or micarta or something. I don't know. Um, so that's a that's a bit of a you know we're we're knife guys. We like to have, we like to be able to pick our own options, and with this one, there wasn't really that possibility. That said, I do find this uh, raindrop carbon fiber rather attractive 
And overall, I find this to be a pretty nicely balanced knife. It's sort of a gentleman's folder, yet it's, it's capable enough and heavy duty enough to serve most people's EDC needs. You know, perhaps you could call this like EDC plus or something like that, where, you know, the blade's a little stockier. We've got that stainless steel reinforcing the carbon fiber. So uh, this is maybe a little on the little beefed up, if you will. And if you like that, and I certainly do, then this also might appeal to you for that reason. So there you go, guys. That's a quick first impression on the Monterey Bay Knives Old Guard, as well as a little bit of a discussion of Ray Laconico and his work. And I have to say, I'm a big fan of Laconico, and I look forward to other production uh, partnerships that may be coming out. He tends to do quite a number of them, so uh, I expect to see more exciting stuff uh, along those lines. And I look forward to, see what in, to seeing what Monterey Bay Knives comes up with next. They're not all uh, super appealing to me, but certainly this one and the XLC were very, very interesting, and I'm sure there'll be more in the future. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll talk to you soon.